my name is David Ote. I'm the Chief Content Officer for the Pain-Free Performance Specialist Certification. And today I wanted to go through a little bit of talk on vertical pressing. Because with routine and programming, we get a lot of content and questions about people that want to ask, how much vertical pressing should I add into my routine? What type of vertical pressing should I add into my routine? And a lot of that leads to the purpose and functionality for whoever is in front of you. When we look at a day-by-day -day task analysis for what people have to do, most people don't have an abundance of vertical pressing within their day-to-day -day lives. So that brings into question what type of pressing should we be doing and then where do we then draw the line on what is appropriate for someone when it comes to a movement quality perspective, which is overall better for pain-free performance and just longevity within the joint. When we look at it, most of the pressing we're going to be doing is going to be outward towards this horizontal plane, slowly moving ourselves up on that 45. So because of that, one of the best ways that you can implement vertical pressing is something like the landmine. And the landmine may be used by most of the coaches that are out there watching this video, but it tends to be shied away from people who are unaware of it. They may see it as intimidating, but they don't understand that this could be one of the best tools you utilize when it comes to your overhead pressing. And I'm going to give you a few reasons why. When we talk about the actual demand of full vertical overhead pressing, there isn't a lot from a day-to-day -day perspective that we see. Most people aren't pressing directly overhead, nor do we know if they have the prerequisite range of motion to get to directly overhead without even adding in the combination of weight, stability, core stability, uh, function within the hip, balance, etc., which can all taper and change it about. You have to look at, especially when we're doing tall standing uh, motions, it's going to put you in a way that's similar to a building where based on small shifts within the pattern, it's going to then stack in different ways, which is the reasoning why like with our spine, we'll have a more lordotic curve at the bottom, kyphotic to round, and then lordotic as we get the cervical. So that way it balances itself out as it goes down to accommodate for the head that's sitting up top. And we need to talk about that accommodation when we, when we talk about overhead pressing and is it something that's necessarily uh, pertinent for me to be doing in my programming. So when we talk about going to overhead, we're going to aim for something that's more of a high angle versus a true vertical type of press. The high angle press is where we see ourselves a lot with the landmine. The landmine has an advantage to most other pressing factors because it works within this semicircular motion where it pivots at the end. The semicircular motion is very similar to most of the movement patterns that we have, whether we're talking about going through the bar path with a chest press. When we press out, you see because the humerus itself has to rotate around that glenohumeral joint, it's almost a very semicircular pattern itself. The squat, where we see someone dip back into it, semicircular in nature, when we have to orient ourselves with anything regarding the humerus. And in fact, we're talking about a semicircular pattern. This is going to allow us to work within that diagonal angle, and for a lot of us, it's going to help alleviate certain pressure. The second thing we're talking about, which is something that's really important to look at, it's counterintuitive to what you've learned from most other vertical pressing, where when we talk about dumbbell presses, for example, when we do vertical pressing, the taller you are, the more difficult the task. Because as I mentioned, your body has to do this balancing act from joint to joint and system to system to make sure that you can maintain uh, tall pillar stability, not allowing the rib cage to flare too much, not letting the pelvis dump in or out. You want to make sure that you're sturdy and strong throughout the entirety of the pattern. When you're standing going through dumbbell pressing or barbell pressing or kettlebell pressing or whatever modality you want to choose, it's much more difficult because the strain is acting more on the body to stabilize while you press completely vertical. That is very different with the landmine. When we talk about landmine pressing, because you're at a higher angle and because of the semicircular nature of the pattern, I'm pushing, pushing more directly on a 45 degree angle at this point than I am truly vertical. So it's counterintuitive in nature where the taller I am, the more stable my body actually is because I'm not necessarily pushing true vertical, but I'm pushing out and about away on something that's more similar to, let's say, a 60 to 45 degree angle, somewhere within that range. This angle makes it more of an incline press than it does a vertical press, which means it's going to alleviate some of that pressure. The counterintuitive action as we go down is you'll see that once we get ourselves to a more stable position, such as a half kneeling spot, 
right? If I'm in here in a half kneeling position, because I'm lower to the ground, the bar is traveling more vertical through nature. So as I press up, it's going to be a little more vertical than when I was standing. And if we want to even multiply that more, say for instance, you're doing a Z press, or say we do a Z Y press, where a Y press is where we're pushing out and away from the body. When I'm at this position, we're talking about as vertical as possible with regard to the landmine. The lower we are to the ground, the more difficult the task is going to be because it is naturally going to be shifting a little bit lower in this space. More vertical through here, and then as we break this point, it becomes more of that upward incline press, which will make it easier for you, specifically when we talk about patterning. And going through this is going to be very important that we're able to program a little bit better when we talk about the actions of what we're doing. The last thing that happens with the landmine press that we see as a, as a misstep with programming is most people want to stick to it as just a push away rather than progressing slowly towards proper scapular humor rhythm. So with a normal press, what we'll see is we want to press ourselves up and what happens is once you get past this midway point, that 90 degrees, you'll see a 2 to 1 ratio with flexion to uh, upward rotation of the scapula. That's important to maintain proper relationship within the shoulder joint, so we need to make sure that we're allowing that scapular humor rhythm to happen within this motion. Most people, when they get themselves into a landmine position, they'll go from here, they're nice and stable. What they do is they create just an isolated movement here at the humerus versus allowing themselves to progress forward. So while this may be a good starting point for somebody, where I'm focusing on just the strength in this capacity from the anterior deltoid, I eventually want to get myself shifting forward in this pattern where I'm getting more towards vertical and allowing the arm to truly cover that ear. The more we can shift through the hips in that way, key point, the hips. So you'll see that as I'm here, rather than going in this position and bending my rib cage forward, what I want to do is I want to shift my body forward to shift into this press, allowing the elbow to rotate out, allowing the body to maintain stability and rigidity through the pressing motion of it. The landmine can be a great piece of equipment when it comes to overhead pressing and progressing towards more vertical-ish patterns, but it's critical to understand what the deficits and strengths of the pattern are. One, minimal footprint, minimal equipment. All you need is an extra landmine piece that can go inside an extra plate, it can go attached to your rack, and you can use the barbell that you already existingly have with half the plates that you would normally need. Two, what's great about it is it already goes through the semicircular pattern, which is super helpful for us when we talk about uh, finding things that aid into natural function of what we'll see from a joint-by-joint -joint perspective. One of the backside things we need to focus on it is the counterintuitive nature of how it works. The higher you are, the more uh, ease there is in the pattern with the landmine, where the higher you are, the more difficulty there is with a true vertical pressing pattern. And the same thing goes on the, the converse side of it. The lower you are with the landmine to the ground, the more difficult the pattern, and the lower you are to the point of ground with respect of taking out the Z press for vertical pressing, usually the easier it is that you'll see because you're eliminating joints from talking into the stability aspect of the pillar. And then again, lastly, with any pressing motion, you want to make sure that you maintain proper scapular humor rhythm. That means as my arm comes up, I should feel the upward rotation of my shoulder blade or my scapula rotating up as well as the humerus goes up through this pressing pattern. Allow for natural movement. Don't get too caught into just going through complete anterior flexion of the humerus. Allow the joint to rotate as necessary because that centration from your body is going to generally tell you what it needs. If you take some of those key points into your vertical pressing programs, or as I'll position them, vertical-ish pressing programs, you're going to find there's much more benefits from a strength aspect and a muscular development aspect, and much less nagging pain from a joint perspective, whether it's the glenohumeral joint, AC joint, or anything that's involved with this uh, shoulder complex itself.